Okay, so if you like a good math challenge, well, this is the perfect little problem for you. A matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. Two trains pass each other going east and west with respective rates of 65 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour. How long before they are 330 miles apart? Okay, so I'm not going to give you any hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity to show off your math skills. So if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, uh, let me just read this prompt just so there's no confusion. We have these two trains. They're obviously uh, going in opposite direction. Uh, one of these trains is going 65 miles per hour, the other 85 miles per hour. How long before they are 330 miles apart? Well, let's go in and see the answer. The correct answer is 2.2 hours. Okay, so did you get this right? Well, if you did, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving rate, time, and distance problems. Matter of fact, we're going to be using algebra here to solve this particular problem. And uh, there could be other approaches to it. And that's why I didn't want to tell you in the beginning of this video that this was an algebra word problem because immediately uh, some of you might, you know, get scared of the word algebra. And it might take away from other creative ways that you could think about this problem and solve it. Okay, so never, uh, you know, look at any problem and say, ah, that thing's just too complicated for me. You should always attempt to solve any problem, even if you're not going to get it right. But uh, this problem is kind of interesting. There's a few interesting twists here. So if you didn't get this right, well, no big deal. Stick with me for a couple minutes here, and you'll totally understand the solution. Okay, so we have this situation. And uh, again, I've already read the problem twice. But anytime you're faced with a math word problem or any problem at that, you need to read that problem more, uh, more than one time. Okay, I like to use the rule of three. So in other words, read the problem at least three times uh, before you start doing anything. Because you might read the problem one time, like, oh, I understand what to do. And you're like, oh, so excited. And you go off to do one, let's say, uh, strategy to solve uh, the problem. But then after thinking about that, you're like, you know, maybe I could have done this other approach. And, you know, you got to give yourself a self time to digest, to assimilate all this information. So read the problem at least three times. And uh, this particular problem, you know, it, there's kind of a lot going on here, right? Got two trains, uh, one's going east, one's going west, and they have different speeds. And we need to kind of figure out, um, you know, how long, right? We're looking for time uh, before these trains are 330 miles apart. And certainly we have to consider that they are passing one another. So what does this all mean? Well, the best thing that we can do here is model this situation. You always want to try to model a word prompt so you can visualize a prompt. That's going to really help you uh, see the solution as well. So let's go, uh, go ahead and take a look at a sketch. And this is a great little prompt because we get to draw these little trains and whatnot. You know, it's so much fun. You know, if you don't like math, I just don't understand why. Okay, so here is my uh, lovely sketch. And of course, uh, you know, we have to you know, be clear here that these trains are not on the same track, right? Because <laughs> that would not be good. So these tracks are running, let's say, uh, parallel to one another. And one train is going east and one train is going west. It doesn't make a difference uh, which, uh, which is which in terms of uh, the one that's going 85 miles per hour or the one that's going 65 miles per hour. That's not essential in our problem, but we need to kind of visualize uh, the situation, right? So these two trains are going to be passing one another. One's going east, one's going west, and then they have these respective uh, speeds. Now, in mathematics, okay, you also want to know this word. This is a huge 
a word in math and science, rate. Okay, a rate, when you say, oh, what's the rate of something or the rate of change of something, that that is synonymous with speed or velocity. Okay, so that's really uh, critical, just in case you didn't know that. We'll talk more about that in a second. But um, the question here is, how long until these uh, trains are 330 miles apart. So we got this train chugging down the track over here and this one over here. So, oh boy, I have, the, <laughs> I have the wheels upside down. That's a terrible train. Okay, so here we go. So 330 miles apart, how long given this situation? Well, there is two things that we need to really understand about this problem. Now, one may not be that obvious. Uh, and uh, this first one though, is we have to understand a formula and we're going to get to that right now and this is a critical formula i would suggest putting this into your long-term memory now in mathematics and science there is a ton of formulas that you'll learn common formulas like let's say the area of a rectangle length times width or you know basic things like this these things should go into your long-term memory but all these other formulas that you learn in mathematics which really start to accumulate especially in algebra and geometry, you know, you have a ton of these, you know, you don't necessarily have to commit all of those into your uh, brain and try to remember everything. That's why you take notes. But some of these formulas are so common and so important that yes, indeed, you should know them even if you don't have any notes. And this is one of them. And this is rate times time is equal to distance. All right. So anytime you're dealing with motion problems, uh, where there's any kind of you know motion of a car, train, plane, whatnot, you need to immediately be thinking about this formula. Okay, so rate times time is equal to distance. Let's go ahead and talk about this formula. So what is rate? Okay, so as I indicated, the rate of something is, well, first of all, let me just back up here. There is a technical definition for a rate. Now I'll explain that in just one second. Uh, I'll circle back, but let me just go ahead and uh, get this formula um, established. So anytime you're thinking about a motion problem, whether it's a car, train, plane, doesn't make a difference, you, the rate is the speed, okay? Speed or velocity. Now here uh, in the United States, okay, we use miles per hour. In other places, it could be uh, kilometers per hour, or whatever, uh, you know, um, units of measure, meters per second, doesn't make a difference, but the rate will be something like miles per hour. So our train here, we're measuring it in miles per hour. So we gotta be very clear about this because if we're measuring our rate uh, in terms of miles per hour, okay, or miles per hour like this, then our time is going to be in hours, okay? So in other words, when we use this formula, if we're multiplying by some amount of time, we need to have uh, the same units in terms of the rate, okay? So if it's miles per hour, then we're going to multiply by hours. And then here are, um, distance is going to be in miles okay so if your units of measure are not consistent you then you need to convert okay so in other words if you are you're, if you're dealing with miles per hour and you have minutes here okay and you're like how fast did a train or a car going 60 miles per hour travel in five minutes we need to convert your minutes to hours okay so a lot to kind of practice here hopefully this makes sense but let me go back here and just tell you very quickly what a rate is in mathematics. So when you think about a rate, uh, people often think about this other word, it's cousin, which is ratio, rate, rates and ratios. And then you're gonna think about its other uh, cousin, which is proportions, okay? Rates, ratios, and proportions, all these are like, you know, they're all best friends, they're all family. And uh, what they are right here, okay, these guys right here are fractions, okay? so. That's what a rate and a ratio is. We're comparing two units of, uh, we're comparing two numbers. Okay, we're comparing them, i.e., as in terms of a fraction, like say uh, 60 miles per one hour. Okay, so this is a fraction. Now, this is an example of a rate, and what distinguishes a rate from a ratio is that a rate is comparing units of measure that are completely different. So here we're comparing distance to time, where a ratio compares the same units of measure like student to teacher ratio, right? One teacher to 20 students. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, teachers and students, they're, they're different units. No, 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 we're counting people here. I know that some of you may not think that teachers are people too, but indeed we are. 
Okay, so that's what rates and ratios are. They're, they are fractions, and proportions are two equal fractions. Okay, so all this stuff you need to keep in mind anytime you hear you know, rates or ratios. All these things should pop up in your head. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply our knowledge here of this uh, formula to solve the problem. Rate times time is equal to distance, and I know you're so excited to see the solution, but before I show you the full solution, I'm going to show you this, which is my invitation for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't stop our lovely problem here if it wasn't that important. Yes, it's important to me, but it's important for my objective, which is to reach as many people as I possibly can that are interested in math, but most importantly, people that are struggling in math, people that need help in math because they're just not maybe uh, getting um, you know the right instruction for them in the classroom or for whatever reason, okay? My biggest thing that motivates me to do these videos is to prevent anyone from giving up on math, from basically being like, I hate math, I don't understand this stuff, so I'm gonna quit. Uh, please do not quit, okay? What you need is encouragement and you need great instruction, okay? And then also you need to be able to do the work. Okay, do not look for shortcuts. If someone's saying, you don't have to do that, you don't have to do that. Listen, I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. And I'm telling you, you have to put in the work. Okay, but, uh, you know, you also need that great instruction as well. So don't give up. That's, and if you uh, need help, then on my uh, YouTube channel, you'll find 2,000 plus videos at, at this time from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. So let's get back to the solution. And thanks for listening to my little commercial. Uh, you know, I really do appreciate your patience, but I have to do that in order to grow my channel. Okay, so here is our lovely situation, and here is the key to this problem. Okay, now some of you may have figured this out, and others of you may have been confused. So we have two trains, okay? And we're like, well, what rate uh, of these trains do we need to consider? Do we need to consider this rate independent of this rate? Well, no, okay? We need to consider the kind of relative motion between these two trains. And this is where this gets kind of confusing. So one train, okay, or the one, train, one of the trains is going 85 miles per hour this way. And this other train is going 65 miles per hour this way. So their relative speed, okay, uh, compared to one another, they're moving uh, 150 miles per hour. That's how fast they're moving away from one another, okay? So, you know, these trains are kind of expanding away. One's going this way and one's going this way, but at what rate? Well, it's going to be the combined rate of their uh, of their speeds, right? So 85 plus 65 is 150 miles per hour. Kind of think of it this way. Let's suppose uh, here we are, and you're standing here with your uh, you and your best friend are like this, and one of you are going to walk this way, and one of you are going to walk this way. Now, if you walk three miles per hour in this direction. Uh, and your friend stays still, well, you're you're moving away at three miles per hour, okay, because your friend is stationary. But if they start moving away at three miles per hour, well, then the speed you guys are moving away from one another is a combination of this is six miles per hour, okay? So you have to consider the relative uh, motion between these two, all right? So hopefully that makes sense because this is the key to figure this problem out. Okay, so our situation is really this. We have these two trains that are moving away from one another at 150 miles per hour. Now we want to figure out, okay, at this rate, and uh, how long is it going to take us to expand, you know, in terms of these two trains, the distance between the two, 330 miles per hour. Well, we're going to revisit our lovely little formula here. Rate times time is equal to distance. So what is the rate? Well, again, it's 150 miles per hour. So miles and hours. So uh, we're looking for how long. So we don't have time. Okay, that's what we're looking for. That's an unknown value. But we do have the distance because the distance is 330 miles. Okay, so here, miles per hour. All right, so we have our uh, rate. Okay, so is our distance in miles? Yes, it is, and our answer will be in hours. So how do we solve this basic lovely algebra equation? Pretty straightforward stuff. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 150. So 330 divided by 150 is 2.2, but what 2.2 what? Hours. Okay, so that is the, 
uh, the solution. And if you were kind of confused about this part of the problem, well, that's understandable. But now you know how this works. Hey, uh, the great thing about math, especially algebra and whatnot, is that, uh, you know, from those of you that are students, okay, uh, once you learn how to solve one type of problem, generally speaking, uh, other problems are going to be similar to it. That's why you have to practice a, a pretty good amount of or pretty, a wide variety of different type of problems. But I call these kind of classic algebra word problems or classic math word problems. They come up over and over again. So motion problems, things that involve rates, time, distance, you know, there might be a few different flavors of those types, but if you figure them out and if you master them, you know, when you see something that's a little bit unusual, all these little concepts and, you know, techniques will come to mind. And you might say to yourself, hey, I remember that YouTube math man telling me to do this, that, and the other thing. And then guess what? You're going to get like A pluses, 100% on your math exams. And that's going to be pretty awesome. Okay, now, if you need additional help, uh, by the way, with any stuff here, all the algebra, or if you just want to practice more word problems, I have a ton of word problems uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, um, Algebra Word Problems. But if you need formal math instruction, okay, like my best stuff, you know, complete, most comprehensive instruction, check out um, my math courses. You'll find my different math courses in the description, the links to them in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.